What's up, Internet? Today I'm going to take a Phantom Drive's external spinny metal disc hard drive and replace the drive in it with a solid state drive. Uh, we're going to use G Parted to shrink the partition because I'm replacing a 1 terabyte drive with the 500 gigabyte drive and also Clonezilla to get all the data that's currently on the drive onto the new drive. Uh, so stay tuned. So you might ask, why am I doing this the hard way? Uh, the reason is, is that on this drive is actually a bootable installation of Ubuntu Linux for my Mac. Um, so I can't just literally connect both drives to the machine and copy the files over. I've got to clone the disk um, in order to make it bootable. There's two steps to that process. The first step is because this is a one terabyte drive, I have to shrink it because the Clonezilla tool will only um, clone a larger drive to a smaller drive. So this, is, this drive is one terabyte, the solid state is 500 gigabytes. So the easiest way I found to get a copy of Gparted is to download a Ubuntu ISO and boot off of it because it is one of the tools included to help you install Ubuntu. So go to Ubuntu.com, download the desktop version, it doesn't really matter which one, um, which version, 18.04 is fine, if there's a newer version out by the time you're watching this video, that'll be fine too, it's included on every version, and make yourself a uh, bootable DVD. All right, as you can see, I've downloaded the ISO, and now I'm going to burn it to disk. The software I'm using is called CyberLink power to go it's just what happens to be installed on this machine. That was what came with my burner. Um, if you have a burner, probably have some kind of software that will burn an ISO to do a bootable disk. If not, there's uh, applications you can find online such as ImageBurn uh, that'll do, do it for you. If you're attempting to shrink a Windows drive instead of a Linux drive like I'm doing, uh, you can actually do it from within Windows. If you come down here and you right click on your start button, go to disk management. It's taking a minute to load up. So let's say we were trying to do this Windows C, if that was the, the disk that you needed to shrink. If you right click on it, you can go to shrink volume and you can enter in a new size. So that can be done right from within Windows, but because we're doing Linux volumes for this particular instance, I can't do it from within Windows because Windows can't read the par partition formats of Linux. So we have to reboot into the Ubuntu install CD and use Gparted instead. Now, you can actually use Gparted to resize Windows partitions as well. So the Gparted is kind of the universal solution that within Windows only works for Windows. Our bootable Ubuntu ISO has been created. It is in our drive. So now we're going to restart and boot into it. All right, depending on your machine, you may have to hit F2 or delete in order to get into a menu to choose to boot off some other device besides the primary hard drive, or uh, it may just boot directly off the CD-ROM. On this one, I actually have to go into BIOS and tell it to uh, try the, uh, the CD burner first. and then it'll actually try to boot off the external. When you get it to boot into Windows, you'll be greeted with this menu. Uh, the, the default option and the one you actually want to select is this Try Ubuntu Without Installing. You can just hit Enter. You'll get a lot of, a lot of activity and noise from your CD-ROM drive, uh, so don't worry about that. And also don't worry if it takes a long time. 
because you are booting from a CD-ROM drive, this does this does take a while. It could take up to five minutes depending on depending on your system. You may sit here at a black screen for a minute, and then you'll get this, and you'll know you're on your way. And again, you could be sitting at this screen for several minutes as well. We booted off of our Ubuntu Live CD. Now, because I'm working with Apple partitions, I got to do a little housekeeping um, to give Ubuntu the ability to deal with Apple partitions. It doesn't come directly with the ability to do that. So first I'm going to go ahead and connect to a wireless network. So I have access to the internet. Hit the start menu. Now you can skip this part if you're not working with Apple partitions and go directly to Gparted. For software and updates. And I need to enable community maintained and free. Go ahead and reload. This pulls down a, a list of additional packages that you can install to Ubuntu. And even though you're working off of a live CD, you can still install packages. All right. On a terminal. Theory, this has already been done, but we'll go ahead and run it again. sudo apt get install. The program we want is this HFS progs, HFS being Apple's file system. So if we do that, sudo apt get install HFS progs. That gives Gparted the ability to work with Apple partitions. So I'll let that install. Good to go. And then we'll fire off Gparted back to the start menu. And it's one of the options on the first page. Okay, so here's where you choose which hard drive we want to modify. Um, you got A and B. This happens to be the one that, that's of interest to me. This is my um, Linux installation. As I said, it was for my Mac, so it's, it's obviously this is the right thing. Uh, you can see here that a Linux installation has many partitions. I have to get the sum total of these below the 500 gigabytes that is uh, available on the solid state drive I'm going to replace this with. All this stuff I'm not going to change, but this one you can see it's an 820 gigabyte um, folder and there's 600 gigabytes for you so I can shrink this way way down and that is what I'm going to do. First we should we need to unmount it. This is kind of a Linux thing. You can't actually resize a partition that's currently mounted. So now that it's unmounted I can come in here and select this. Select resize and move. I'm going to shrink this down to 300 gigabytes. Um, everything beyond that is free space, and actually, the smaller the size of the drives you have to clone, the the quicker the cloning process goes. So now that it's down from 800 gigabytes to 300, I hit resize. Select apply all operations. And it's gonna thrash on the hard drive a little bit. Let's see this bad boy working. Our source disk is prepped, and now it's time to prep our destination disk. One of the tricks to make this smaller to larger, I'm sorry, larger to smaller drive 
cloning work is you have to make partitions that exactly match your source disk. So now I'm going to go over here to, I'm going to check and see that the first thing in this list is an Apple HFS partition that's 190 megabytes. So I'm going to come over here to SDC, our totally blank drive. Before I forget, um, because this is a laptop, I'm actually using a Vantec Nexstar HDD duplicator in order to allow me to connect this serial ATA SSD to a USB port. Uh, links to this device. This device can actually do duplicating on its own if you're going smaller to larger, um, but it also works as a, as a USB dock as well. So I'll put a link to this device in the description, as, as well as these Pioneer SSDs, which are relatively inexpensive. And I'll put a link to the Phantom Drive's external drive I'm using. That's just a, a regular magnetic hard drive. So anyway, back to Gparted. We're gonna make a new partition. I'm gonna make it 190 megabytes, just like the just like the one on our source drive. And we are going to make it HFS plus, just like the one on our source drive. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply operations. back take a look at what the second partition is and it is ext4 and it is 95.37 gigs so basically I'm just going to go through and duplicate all of the partitions on the source drive to the destination drive in the exact same order and at the exact same size okay got all of the destination partitions set up. You can see they all match in size to SDP, 190 megs, 95 gigs, 15 gigs, 195 gigs. So I'm gonna go ahead and select apply all operations. All right, destination disk is prepped. It's now time to move on to the cloning part using Clonezilla. We're back in Windows after having resized the disk. Uh, now we're gonna move on to the step of cloning. And to do that, we're gonna do, we're gonna use a, another bootable disk called Clonezilla. Links to both this Clonezilla Live CD as well as the Ubuntu Live CD will be in the description below, but I'm going to go to Live CD. Download an ISO file. AMD 64 is acceptable for the architecture. Uh, that doesn't just apply to AMD CPUs. You can use this if you have an Intel. Um, by default, this came up set as a zip file. We want to change to an ISO so we can burn it to a, a CD or DVD. So make sure you make that switch and then hit download. Okay, when I will burn this to disk and when we come back, I will be booting off of this live CD. Now getting clones low booted up. Um, here it's asking me for my keyboard layout. If you have a strange keyboard, make sure to select it. Default is just a standard English keyboard. We're going to choose that. And do we want to change the keyboard layout? No, we want to keep. It's going to go through some more stuff. 
And then now we're going to get to start Clonezilla. This transfer is from device to device. We want to select the section, second option here. And if you were cloning to two drives of the same size or from a smaller to a larger drive, you could probably get away with beginner. Uh, but because we're going from a larger to a smaller, we need to choose expert and select um, some particular options. Uh, so we are doing disk to disk. This next option is a bit tricky, uh, especially on this machine, because I have a one terabyte internal drive on this computer and then the one terabyte external drive I'm trying to clone. So make sure you know which is which. Um, this, this SDA is actually the internal, so I'm going to choose SDB as the source disk. And then I'm going to choose STC, the 480 gigabyte SSD, as the destination, or the target. Now at the expert option screen, we've got to make a few choices in here uh, because of the cloning a larger drive to a smaller drive to make this all work. Uh, the first one is to uncheck resize the file system to fit partition size of target partition. In order to uncheck it, press the down arrow until you get to it, and then hit the space bar. We also need to check, skip checking destination disk size before creating partition table. Otherwise, it'll give us an error saying that the destination disk is too small. Hit tab to get down to OK. This just Ask us if we want to check the disks to make sure they're in good health. If you know your disks are in good health, you can go ahead and, and select to skip checking. And we also need to not create the partition table on boot sector in target machine. Um, we all, what we did in the last step in G parted by copying over the exact same partition size already took care of this. And if we let Clonezilla attempt to do this with any of the other options, um, it'll give us again an error about the target disk being too small. So we hit enter here. This just asks us what we want to do when we're done with the cloning. I'm going to go ahead and say choose. And now this will pop up at the bottom. It gives you the actual command line command for what we're trying to do. Probably don't necessarily care, but it's there for you anyways. We hit enter. It's going to ask us if we're sure that this is what we want to do. Yes, we're sure. It's going to ask again, make sure we're really, really sure. Yes, we're really, really sure. We hit enter and let it rip. That's it. Your disk is now successfully cloned. If you're going to stick this hard drive in a computer, you can go ahead and power off and do that. The next step for this tutorial is I'm going to tear apart the external hard drive and put in our SSD. Set up on our workbench. I'm using a iFixit toolkit, which is pretty handy, a lot of drivers in it. I have not actually disassembled this device before. Uh, no pre-preparedness. The only thing I've done is I've removed the warranty void if removed sticker, which is not actually enforceable in the United States. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do about getting this apart to replace the drive. I looked around and these are the only two screws that I can see on the exterior, so I'm assuming maybe It's a little prying. We'll get us where we want to go. Oh, 
even easier. Just push on the front. <clears throat> Looks like the drive could be side mounted, but it's not. Looks like it's bottom mounted. So let's try removing these bad boys. It could be wrong, and this could actually pull the whole circuit board out. It does appear to be pulling the hard drive out. Okay. Push forward off the serial APA connection. And voila. It's out. It's a Toshiba hard drive. To mount the SSD, I got this little guy it's or from you know, the Oracle brand. Um, I've used these for a lot of USB hubs, so I was pretty sure the quality was acceptable. Link to this product will be in the description below, along with everything else. And so this one slides in place of the old drive. We will bolt it down just like factory. Oh, actually, probably need to get the hard drive mounted first into the tray. So let's do that. I don't think the screws are going to be accessible when we're done. Use our SSD. Clipped in place. Now we'll slide the tray back in.
screw hole doesn't want to quite line up. So we're gonna finagle this a little bit to get it to do so. Or totally drop the screw. One that's nice about this iFixit screwdriver is that it's magnetized means you can just kind of stick the screw on the end and it's going to stay for the most part. So you don't need two hands to hold a screw to a screwdriver. Kind of nice. Okay. One of the things I didn't like about this Phantom Drives external is that there is a stupid bright little hard drive and power indicator LED. So I'm gonna go find a little bit of clear tape to put over that, uh, just so it doesn't shine as brightly before we actually put this thing back together. Get at that LED. Got four screws that are coming off here. Kind of a cheap solution. Just to get to see the light, but it just won't have the brightness to pierce the night when I'm sitting at that machine anymore. One moment while I chase down that screw. You don't need to crank down any of these screws, but do make sure they're tight. screw holes to hold it together are here and here. We'll push this back in the way it came out. Line up our two final screw holes. At the 
does not appear to be the right screw. Well, that's actually it, huh? It just sinks down in a lot further than I expected it to. Drives physically assembled. Thanks for watching.